Hi, amazing PISD artist. I'm Erica Pomponio. I'm the art teacher at Mendenhall Elementary. Let's get ready to do some art. All right, so now that you've gathered your materials, remember that can look a lot of different ways depending on what you have on hand in your house. I paint a lot, so I tend to have a lot of brushes. Remember, a variety is great. So meaning a lot of small brushes all the way up to big fat brushes will give you different lines and different textures. Paint is awesome. Watercolor, I love because you can get a lot of different effects from it and you get a lot of use out of it and you don't need very many supplies. You just need this and a cup of water and a brush and you're good to go. Uh, you can also use markers as watercolors too. So draw with the marker and then once you've drawn with it, then you go back with a wet paintbrush and you turn it into watercolor paint. Also, a lot of you probably have pens, different kinds of pens, whether it be like the marker style pens or even the gel pens or ink pens are awesome too. You can get lots of different lines and textures with things like that. Crayons obviously are always a great option. You can use them to outline, to color in, use the big wide side. You can even peel them and rub and get big wide fat lines. Uh, so that will give you a different layer or dimension to your mixed media. Uh, paint pens are awesome if you've done a craft project before. They can add a really great dimension, whether it's just regular paint or metallic, like this one is. Sharpie, everyone's good favorite go-to. If you have that on hand, that's awesome as well. I also like to keep a couple different kinds of glue depending on what I'm doing, especially since this is a mixed media piece. Then you have other options uh, some dry a little bit faster, so that's good. Also, I like to have different kinds of stencils. Sometimes helps out if you wanna plan out different uh, circles or squares or anything. If anything, you have a nice straight edge if you wanna make straight lines. Uh, tearing paper is also a good option. Another thing that I want you to think of in terms of materials is you don't have to have just plain paper. You can also use different materials. So I use a lot of recycled materials in my art. So you can use the inside that's plain, you can draw on this, or you could also use the outside of packaging and get different colors. Uh, even if it has the text on it, it's not a big deal. It'll look really, really cool. Uh, but even just think about this, you have this nice blue on the bottom of here. And also since it's cardboard, it would give you a little bit more texture as well. You could even make it three dimensional and stand up. Uh, also doing different, you know, catalogs or magazines. You might get kind of like junk mail. Uh, you can flip through and find, like I found this one that has water. You could get lots of really pretty blues and different textures here. Also don't forget about things like your notes from school. Like I took a couple of notes from the slides I talked about earlier. Um, just some big things that you want to think about. Uh, your notebook paper is awesome. It's got cool lines on it. You can get different shapes and everything. You probably have this on hand anyway. So don't be afraid to use that to make art. Also with mixed media, you can think about different patterns and different textures. So remember when we talk about texture, we're talking about the way that something feels. So like this one's a glittery paper. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot more rough. Uh, even like something like dots will kind of give you a different texture, uh, like almost like it would feel bumpy or something. Uh, don't be afraid to use save little scraps like this is my scrap drawer paper so anything that i made a project from like you can see here the hearts i still save because you never know what you might need just a little bitty bit of uh for any kind of little project so save your scraps if you have a um like sometimes i just put them in baggies uh, or if you have a little drawer in your craft space or art space um these are great things to do, uh, even when I've cut out like letters and stuff, you never know when you could use those small little pieces. So save all that, especially for when you're doing mixed media, because that's super helpful. So just wanted to give you a quick tutorial or guide of what kind of materials you could have on hand, but really it could be anything. So once you kind of have all your stuff gathered, clear yourself a space to work in.
While I wait for my paint to dry, I'm going to start to gather some additional materials to add another layer on top of my mixed media piece. Since I used crayon plus watercolor in my painting, I've already made a mixed media piece. However, I feel that it needs a little bit more dimension and detail in the foreground or the front of my picture. I'm gonna do this by collecting materials like cardboard, some magazines, I have a few images there that will work in my picture, as well as some pattern and different color papers. All of them have a little bit different uh, details and a little bit different textures to add to my picture. And I'm gonna show you how to add all of those in kind of a collage form to add an additional element to your picture. So here is my finished piece. I'm super excited about it. I love that it has a lot of different texture from the cardboard. And if you noticed how I folded that back and forth, kind of that accordion fold to get that texture for it. Also in the different papers that I chose, I thought it was a really cool that uh, when you looked at that one initially, it was one pattern on one side. And then I found I liked this one a little bit better just to get those other colors in there. So you get lots of different texture here. And then even using the magazine uh, pieces or pictures, like I said, gives you that nice umbrella that I wanted in my piece. So I have a good amount of stuff in my foreground, which is my front. And you can tell because all of these uh, additional details are bigger. We have the middle ground of the water and then we have the background of the sky. And you see that starting at the very back edge of my water. Now I could go uh, in a little bit further. I could come back with some other paint on top or more paper to add a little bit more dimension to the clouds or I could have sun or I could have people swimming in the water. I could add a whole bunch of different elements. Really, uh, the sky is the limit as creative as you want to be. I feel like mine's at a good stopping point for right now. Uh, now remember, you do not have to do a beach landscape. That's what I chose because as artists, we make decisions based on our memories things that are important to us, things that interest us. And in my case, I have a personal connection to the beach. I grew up going to the beach and now that's a tradition that I continue with my family. So this is a little bit from memory and a little bit from my imagination. So I invite you to choose any kind of landscapes. Remember, go in your backyard, go in your front yard, look around. It could be something completely creative, something you come up with, maybe using fruit and candy as your structures for your houses or for your mountains or for anything you include in your picture. Or it could be an Arctic landscape and you could have penguins and other additional elements like that. 